Hi there and welcome to one of the first episodes of FM Campbell. Uh, today we're going to be looking at basic navigation around the game um, and my first impression I suppose. Um, I know it probably isn't really my first impression, I've been playing it now for about two months but um, I do tend to change uh, a lot of the aspects and a lot of the content on here, for example the skins, um, logos, um, all the uh, team kits and uh, obviously add a load of face packs. Um, but basically, yeah, um, this is I've taken it all back to the original state that the game was in. Um, for the sake of this game, I have used Manchester United um, just to sort of operate around the game, just to show you guys what I think, I suppose. Um, I got the game on release night, technically. I went to Asda and with my friend who plays Football Manager probably as much as me. Um, we went at midnight and got the game. Um, yeah, so basically this is how you start off. Um, the way I start a game, I normally um, disable player and attribute masking, um, or I just it's easier. So, for instance, if I show you um, a player, I'm sorry to all your Arsenal fans, but I am using Van Persie. Um, so this is Van Persie. I, I enable all attributes of all players um, for all clubs. So even though I'm Man United, obviously they'll still show for everyone, so there's Aspilicueta for example. Um, yeah, so but you can kind of see some of the face packs as well, that haven't been removed for some sort of reason. Um, navigation around the game, um, it's fairly similar to 2013, um, everything's all in the same sort of order from what I can see. Um, the only thing I wasn't too keen on, I, I normally use the dark skin, um, I find this is too in your face, especially when it's darker or it's getting late at night and it's big bright white light in your face, I, I so I tend to use the, the darker skin. Plus it looks a little, little bit more sleek. Um, I do actually like um, the 2013 dark skin. Um, I quite like that one. So if there's a, um, I know there's a skin out there for that, for the 2013 for the 2014 game. So I tend to use that in um, my own games, um, which you will see throughout all videos when I show you different content and things like that. Um, so yeah, I quite like the way it's laid out. Obviously, it's a bit in your face, um, especially if I put the dark skin on now. Um, even though even the dark skin isn't especially great, it is still a little bit in your face. Um, I think it's this one. It might not be. <coughs> Just reloading the skin. Yeah, um, I tend to, um, yeah, so I disable an attribute um, masking um, as I just find it a little bit frustrating. And also with regards to fixtures, um, I usually um, use um, random fixtures. I don't use real fixtures. So this is the 2013 um, sort of uh, the skin that I use. It's the same as the 2013 game, but there is a skin for the 2014 one, which I will show you in another video. Um, it just It's not as in your face. The, the colours are broken up a little bit. Um, it's just a little bit easier to navigate, and it's not as smack in your face and, and brightening and damaging your probably damaging your eyes. Um, so yeah, that's the team. Um, so it's quite easy to use. Everything's sort of laid out quite well. Um, there are slight changes from 2013, but overall, I think everything they've done is for the for the better. Um, obviously, the training is a lot different. This is all very new. Um, when you look at the coaches and stuff, it's all very similar. Um, and individual trainers obviously there as well and that's how we were used to seeing it as training as your team but there's now an overview screen um, which is quite cool um, everything else is the same I think pretty much um, your backroom advice is the same obviously your team reports position by position team meetings are the same um, obviously different parts of the game are different um, it's not the same general story throughout the game so for instance your team meetings you can sort of introduce yourself and there's a lot more sort of um, connections in conversation and, and things that you can say to players or staff or to other teams or about other players the only thing that I have sort of um, I haven't really liked for instance to so say for instance if I wanted to go um, and I wanted to buy for the sake of this if I wanted to buy Kalshioni so look at Colcioni, he is quite a good player. Um, Man United do tend to need 
some more centre backs. There are some I'm a fan of and some I'm, I'm not. I won't go into that now. Um, there used to be a, a button up here called Talk to Player, where you'd be able to click and you could talk to the press about a variation of different things, um, which is was quite cool actually. I quite liked that because I used to try and tap up players quite a lot, and that was sort of that. Um, which is it letting me do it? Why is that then? Yeah, right. So yeah, sorry. Um, so if I go to a a, a player, for example, um, someone that I'd like Man United to buy in real life is this young man here, Luke Shaw, one of the bright England potential left backs um, who Chelsea are actually rumoured to be signing in real life. Um, apparently they made a bid, but it was rejected. Um, so we look at this here, and you could, you you would normally have a talk to press button where you can talk to the press about various different things, but it's actually now um, in here. But there's not a talk to press; it's just a declare interest. So you would declare interest in the player. Um, I would say, would you like to express your interest? And it would actually become a press conference. And there's just a very one question. You reportedly made it very clear that you're interested in signing Southampton's full, uh, left back Luke Shaw. Can you shed any more light for us? And I can basically say it in a type of manner, and I can say one of the five, which is a little bit frustrating because I may want him on loan. Um, I may just be sort of tapping him up a little bit. For instance, there used to be about five or six options. They used to say that you were in awe of his ability, um, that you potentially like to bring him to the club. Um, you could do that with uh, via loan or transfer. Um, you can say that he's a bright, he's a hot prospect, and he thinks he could become a great player. Um, that he's already a good player, and there's so many things that you used to be able to say, which is a little bit frustrating because that was one of the main parts of the game in the last one for me. I used to really tap up players consistently, and then they used to consider leaving their club. But it is just a matter of we are interested in this player. So, for instance, we are interested in Luke Shaw coming to Manchester United. Whether he will then further on the story he then decides whether the, it, it's something that he would like um, based on one thing and as soon as you've declared interest that's it you've done it I've, I can't go and do it again um, I think months down the line or weeks down the line you can do it again um, but it's, it's it's just disappointing with, where I could do something and tap up a player in a week so much to go into having to wait a month or so just to tap him up again um, that's probably one of the frustrating things I found about this. Um, apart from that, there's not too many really. Um, I like the interaction with the players, and I like the idea of how a captain you work alongside your captain. Um, also, one thing that I've seen as well when I speak to the board. So if I go to the boardroom and I interact with the board, and I say something, um, it probably won't do it for me now. Uh, so let's see if we can increase the transfer budget yes so for example it says you haven't been for us very long so you should work what you have for now um, leak to press now this is quite cool as well um, you can obviously leak to the press that the club aren't backing you um, sometimes that can that can bounce either way they can either be very disappointed with you because they may feel that you that you are being backed for example I kind of am I've got 33.3 .3 million in the bank ready to spend um, and that's without selling any players. Um, so they will probably be quite disappointed with me that I'm not that, that I've said that and I've linked it to the press. Um, but there are instances perhaps where you may have a rich club and they've given you five million um, for a Premier League team, something like that. Say for instance a Man City or a Chelsea. They're a very rich, very rich clubs. Um, they've got no debt, really rich owners, and they go and give you two or three million. You could probably ask for more money, and they say no, and then you would leak it to the press, and it could come up that. The press feel that, for example, that, that that you're probably right, and they will maybe give you a little bit more money. I suppose it's a putting the press, uh, putting the the owners under a bit of pressure. So I quite like that. Um, what else did I look at that I liked? Um, the youth system and the youth intake is all pretty much similar. There's um, Adnan Yanazai, who is turned out to be quite a good player for us for Man United. Um, yeah, that's about it really. 
And one thing that seems to be linking through all games is if you get an English player, especially in when you're playing in England, for instance, Danny Welbeck here, um, who's a younger player, or your Luke Shaw, your um, uh, there's a couple of Southampton players. Um, they tend to be about triple the price just because they're English, which is quite tough because obviously when you're a big club, you you want to invest in youth and invest in English players for your homegrown status players and things like that. Um, which is a which is a bit of a shame, but that just seems to be in real life as well. Although if Wayne Rooney goes for thirty million, as rumoured, I'll be I won't be very happy. Um, your staff responsibilities are all the same. Um, one thing that's quite different if we look at the staff. Um, so these are your different staff. There are a different. They do. They've set it up a different way with the staff, which I quite like. So for instance, they used to just have. Um, your amount of physios, your amount of, they do still have scouts, amount of physios, amount of fitness coaches, individual things. Um, but now they have obviously head of youth development, your director of football, which are, are pretty in place. People debate on the director of football quite a lot. I tend not to use one. Um, the only time if is I'm struggling to um, get rid of a player, although um, they can basically do deals that aren't quite suited to you. But we'll go into that in another time. Um, obviously. You can now have your under 21s manager and your under 18s manager, um, and they can also have assistants, which is um, something that I've never really gone into before. As long I find, as long as you have a good one of these and they play with your tactics, so the players learn your tactic, they're in your youth and under 21s. Um, then I tend not to use an assistant manager. Um, under 21s is now your reserves, so they they are your reserves. There there isn't. Um, and under, from the last game, it used to be the reserves team, but it's now the under 21s. Um, and that doesn't change anything, they don't necessarily have to all be under 21. Um, under 18s, obviously, that, that's self explanatory. Um, and now, instead of having physio amount, um, fitness coach amount, and things like that, they have other Man United staff. So you could literally, if you wanted to, have an assistant manager, a head of youth development, and 13 scouts, like 13 physios, if you wanted to. Um, obviously, you need to spread that out over coaches, fitness coaches, goalkeeping coaches, um, physio, um, and all sorts of things like that. There's different loads of different staff you can have, um, and then you can also do that as well with the reserves and with the under 18s. So you'd obviously have under 18 staff that are good working with with youth and things like that, and then you have your basic scout total. So obviously, that Man United have 18, but they have revised 14. So Probably, I mean, it, if I look at these now um, and I change it to the mental attributes, so judging potential is quite a key thing with scouts. So if I only scouts down here that aren't very good at judging potential, so Peter Braun is 14 in both. I mean, we have a, so he would be probably one that I would release. Um, these aren't actually too bad, but the lower ones I would get rid of basically, and I'd go and find some 2020s and so on and so forth. Um, so that's all. That all operates the same. Um, you can obviously, as you talk to the board button as normal. What else do we have? Um, your confidences. Instead of having three or four general confidences, they actually have individual ones for different competitions, and they actually detail what have how you want they want you to do in within these sort of confidence areas. Um, so, for instance, the FA Cup. The minimum expectation that is the team reach the final of the FA Cup. And then when you have a confidence level with that, then you have other ones as well. They don't sort of regard the Capital One Cup as a as very important. So we'll probably evaluate on other things. So if you don't finish to do too well in the Capital One Cup, financially it would support you, but you only sort of get a confidence level down to here. It won't necessarily matter because they're not really interested in how you get on, which is a shame because you want to win every competition. But it makes it easier for you, I suppose. Um, but then they would obviously want to concentrate on the Premier League, and I'd imagine, yeah, the, the challenge with the title. Um, as Man United had when they won the league last year. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, also, with regards to talking about players or two players, there isn't a talk to player button anymore here. It's actually in your overview and it's a private chat. So you can talk to players here. Um, obviously, agents come into it a little bit as well. Um, these are all sort of things I'll dabble in a little bit more, but it's a general navigation of the game. It's quite straightforward, very, very similar to the previous ones. Um, I know you can get shortcuts and things up here with different skins and stuff. Um, whilst I talk about skins, I'll look at the 
the other one. So if we go into the preferences and we look at this one, this is the dark skin which they release, which SI got SI games are released via Steam. And um, you have to subscribe to um, these on Steam, and then the content is then available for download, um, and it will pop pop up in here um, as normal. So this is the darker version. This is the 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 stock darker version. So again, it's just a little, still a little bit in your face. Um, obviously, with the dark, it helps a little bit, but it's still very much sort of the. It's a, like a light, lighter. Well, it's like a medium grey, I suppose. But it's closer to a light grey. Um, just the, the the with the writing on the back of it, I, I find was a little bit frustrating. I don't know. I'm I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I I like it things a certain way in the game and. That's how I tend to operate. Um, so yeah, I do take, tend to use the skin that I downloaded for the 2013. I will do another video about that and maybe look into how to install them for you. Um, just saying, so you know, I am a Mac and PC user, um, so I can show you both systems, operating systems, no problem. Um, so this is the one that I use all the time, um, and I also use, like I said, other content like face packs, which some of them have shown up still, strangely. Um, but yeah, the general navigation of the game is quite good. It's quite straightforward. Every, everything's sort of um, in front of you to pick from. Um, just have a little explore yourselves. There's probably a couple of things I haven't covered. But the main things that, I, that I've sort of found either frustrating, like the uh, talk to player or talk to press, has gone um, to things that I think are quite cool. Um, the tactics screen now, they actually, if we have a look, you can't limit familiarity. So if I use an existing tactic, just for um, for example, a four one four one, the familiarity comes up in here for each individual one. Where it used to be down here, you used to have all this stuff in a line down here, with then your team just inside, and then your pitch view here. Um, the in-game, um, the match engine. Um, it starts off on the ba on a basic a low graphic setting, so I was a little bit sort of worried that the graphic on the match engine either was too powerful for my for my Mac, which was strange because I I generally do have quite a powerful Mac, um, or they just sort of dulled it down a little bit and maybe sort of I'd had problems with it. But you do go into the settings and you can play with the with the match engine settings, and the, I then set it to um, suitable for your PC or Mac. And the match engine increased dramatically, and I was, I was a lot happier. Um, but yeah, so that's about it. That's all I can think of that I'm, that I'm happy with or not happy with. Um, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Um, whilst we're here again, I will mention the Twitter page. So this is the Twitter page here. It's at FM Campbell with the two ones. Um, we're a couple of hours in now. We've got a couple of followers. Um, I'd just like to give a shout out for Champ Chong. Um, I'll leave his um, link to his channel in the description below also. Um, a little bit of sort of interaction with him. Um, he basically does everything all across the board, gaming news, all all games, consoles, all platforms, all different types of games. Um, he's quite cool. I've been subscribed to him since with my personal channel for a long, long time now. Um, I actually created this um, Champarito thing for him here. Um, so yeah, he's quite entertaining, especially his new latest FIFA videos, uh, which are hilarious. And to hear an Australian swear using some of the words that I tend to use in a different, but he uses in obviously his Australian accent is is hilarious. It's brilliant. Um, so I'd go check him out if I were you. I would highly recommend him. Um, like I said, yeah, that's the Twitch channel. So go follow us there. Um, we'll be doing regular interaction as normal. Um, for instance, we're a couple of hours in and we're 18 tweets in talking about the new update. Um, obviously, the first video, if you want to check that out, and obviously the interaction with Champ Chong, where I created that for him using Photoshop. So, yeah, my name's Tom. It's been lovely to speak to you all, and I'll see you in the next one.